ultimately in professional wrestling, the show must go on. And no matter how sad many of us are at the news of the passing of the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, baby, this week at the age of 69, uh, you know, ultimately the show does go on, and you've got Money in the Bank 2015 coming up this Sunday, and I'll be talking more about Dusty Rhodes and his career, his legacy, his impact in an upcoming video. I assure you of that for those of you that wonder. But I'm here more so now to try and compartmentalize and not just focus on that, even though I could talk forever about the greatness of the American Dream Babies. Um, and polka dots and all that good stuff, if you will. I'm going to try and conduct a business at hand, and that business is, again, talking about WWE Money in the Bank 2015. So let's talk about my actual thoughts heading into this show. Now, the first thing that stands out to me is the fact that this show is going to happen a month earlier than it usually does. And I'm kind of torn on this because, on the one hand, I like the fact that there's a little bit of spacing between Money in the Bank and SummerSlam, because let's face it, in a lot of ways, Money in the Bank has become one of those big four pay-per-views for the WWE, surpassing perhaps Survivor Series. If you really want to look at it, because of the significance and the importance of the show, it's positioning everything else. So I kind of like the fact that you maybe have it in June in that old King of the Ring spot, and you give two months of buffer between some of your bigger shows like Money in the Bank and SummerSlam. You know, on the one hand, Money in the Bank was a great setup to SummerSlam in some ways, but maybe it was too much too big in too short of a window. So I'm okay with it. You know, it feels odd, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm willing to give it a shot. Um, you know, but again, you know, we've had, um, what did we have? We had a show about a month ago, then we had Elimination Chamber two weeks ago. Yeah, it was Payback, Elimination Chamber, and now another show again. I'm hoping that they don't have another big one until Battleground next month because I kind of would like that break. Now, in terms of the actual show itself, this is pretty much a three-match card. It is. Three matches on the main card matter, and three matches really don't. And while I applaud the WWE for getting all of the belts, it looks like here, yeah, I see uh, Divas, tag title, the U.S. champion is at least wrestling on the show, and then obviously the World Heavyweight Championship. All the belts are being featured in some capacity. All the champions are being featured in some way, shape, or form. That's a good thing. I just wish they would do a little bit more to make some of those undercard matches mean something because, you know, I look at this show, it has a lot of potential. It should be hard for this show to suck, even with half of the matches only mattering and half of them really not. You know, I, I'm just saying it should be hard for it to suck, but imagine if you put a little more into the IC title match, a little bit more into the tag title match, a lot more into the Divas title match. And you made those matches mean something. And you made those feuds and stories heading into them mean something and have some type of consequence. You'd be looking at a potentially outstanding show. As opposed to in this case, it should be a show that'll be hard to suck. A lot of people may be pissed off based off of who could potentially win Money in the Bank. But that alone does not necessarily make it a bad show and that necessarily wouldn't make it a bad show at all because it might very well be the best decision for all parties involved uh, but anyways this is kind of some of my general thoughts i would expect after watching the show and to the review you know unless the execution of the show is just god awfully bad or they really screw up with a decision somewhere that this show is at least going to be passable and you know, probably worth the three hours of time spent and the 995 spent in order to watch it now, let me get the matches that really don't matter that much out of the way. Uh, looking at the IC title match between Big Show and Ryback. I'm okay with Ryback winning the IC title. It just, do we have to immediately throw him into a program with the Big Show? I'll pretty much take a pass on this one. The Divas title match, more of the same. And I mean that, more of the same. Paige in the title picture again. And Nikki Bella is still the champion. And I just wonder... Why? I mean, at this point in time, the WWE, to me, can only have one reason for continuing to have Nikki Bella be the Divas champion. And that is they want to keep the belt on her long enough so that way they can wipe AJ Lee off of the record books. And I, I, I would think at this point in time that that would be the motivation. Uh, to be fair, the Divas division hasn't been helped lately. I give Divas a chance. Crap was crap. No surprise there. 
Um, as far as Nikki as champion, she's, you know, it's sad because in a lot of ways she's improved a lot as a performer. Some of you might argue that once she got got some big boobs, she got a lot better in the ring. <laughs> and she's, she's worked and she's gotten better. And, you know, you look at a lot of ways Paige and Nikki should have a good match, but we've seen it before. I really don't have any desire to see it again. Frankly, I really don't have a desire to see Paige become, what, a three-time Divas champion or Nikki Bella retain and stay the Divas champion. So zero interest in this freaking match. I at least, I have to say, have a little bit of interest in the tag title match between the primetime players and the New Day. While I still don't like the type of heels that the New Day are, at least the WWE has run with them. You know, they try to feature them like they matter a little bit, and that's cool with me. And then obviously the primetime players getting a little bit of a run here, I'm okay and I'm cool with that as well. You know, the whole concept of the one black team has to now face the other black tag team, I don't really give a fuck at this point. It's getting them on the show, and I'm fine with that. You know, and, and, and it could work, you know, and this might be a decent match, actually. So out of those three undercard matches, like I said, I really could care less about Big Show Ryback for obvious reasons. I could give even fewer fucks about that Divas title match. And again, I think that speaks for itself for obvious fucking reasons. And then the tag title match, you know, could be the best out of those three, but it'll at least be the one out of those three that I at least care to give a little bit of a fuck about, but not too much. Now let's talk about the matches that actually, frankly, matter on this show. And I'm going to start off with the namesake of this pay-per-view, the Money in the Bank ladder match. Now, you know, in a lot of ways, I would usually want the Money in the Bank ladder match to either main event or at least semi-main event on this show. But I don't think that's a proper placing for this match on this particular card. I would want to have this sh match either be third or fourth, especially if you were going to do some type of cash-in, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. I think in terms of the flow of this show, the way it would work best is with that Money in the Bank ladder match either being third or fourth on the card, with Cena versus Owens being semi-main, and then that WWE World Heavyweight Championship match closing out the night. It's just the way I look at it. Now, in terms of Money in the Bank ladder matches, I think they always work best when you have a couple of different types of guys in the fold. When you have some type of giant or huge fucking dude. Because you need that type of guy for the power spots in that type of match. You've got it with Kane. Yeah, it's Kane, but he serves a purpose here. And that's fine. And then you need a couple of those, what you would call the glorified crash test dummies, the guys that'll flip and spill all over the place and provide you some of the real high-paced, energetic excitement. You've got Neville here. It's going to be a nice showcase for him. You've got Dolph Ziggler. He's been in a lot of these types of matches, so he knows what the hell he's doing. You know, Kofi Kingston, he's been in these types of matches, so he knows what the hell he's doing. And then you've got those guys that are kind of a balance. The guys that are bigger guys, but they're not giants. They're not smaller guys, but the guys that can do some of this, some of the power stuff. And in that case, you've got Randy Orton, you've got Sheamus, and you've got Roman Reigns. I think you've got a good mix of guys in this match. And to me, it really sets up for this match potentially being really, really good. Now, ultimately, this match could be outstanding but if Roman Reigns wins that money in the bank, as most of us would probably put money on, and rightfully so, I think a lot of people are going to be pissed off about it. Kind of get it to a degree, but frankly, what other choice or option do they have at this point in time? I mean, now I know a little while back I said I would have Sheamus win money in the bank. And I still somewhat would stand behind that to a degree because you look at the fact that he's involved with that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, you know, that's one reason to maybe give him the opportunity. The fact that you need a heel like him established at the top, you know, to be able to sit there and work with some of your top faces like the Cena's and the Orton's, oh God, of the worlds. But the Roman Reigns is the Dean Ambrose's as well. You know, they've kind of backed off of uh, Ryback a little bit. Or not Ryback, excuse me. They've really booked, backed off of Bray Wyatt, who's not even booked on this fucking show. They couldn't even put him in the ladder match for crying out loud. Um... You know, to me, it would make some sense to put a Sheamus in that type of spot because at some point in time, you're looking at him as a potential opponent for Brock Lesnar as well. You want to get the most out of that Lesnar investment you can. And putting that briefcase on a Sheamus, you know, people would buy him and believe him 
as a world champion. Furthermore, he would be that type of champion. People would kind of be pissed if he got the strap again so he could get some legit heat. You know, it could work. However, in this particular case, I think it works best if Roman Reigns does cash in. It provides you a lot of options, a lot of flexibility, what you could do with both the Roman Reigns character and what you could do with that title picture heading into SummerSlam and beyond. And now in terms of money in the bank and if Roman Reigns wins, which I fully expect him to unless WWE completely and totally scores us, which I almost think at this point would be kind of idiotic, um, you know, would you have him cash in the same night? In this particular case, I think I would. I wouldn't wait until Raw, wouldn't wait until Battleground, I wouldn't wait until SummerSlam. I might do it here. The product kind of needs a little bit of something here. As we've kind of reached that lull until we get to the SummerSlam time. There's a little bit of a lull in the product. I think Rollins as a champion, frankly, has been a little bit underwhelming and a little bit stale. Um, you know, on the one hand, it'd be cool for Dean Ambrose to get his moment. But man, imagine if Roman Reigns cashed in and fucked over Seth Rollins. Imagine if Roman Reigns cashed in and fucked over Dean Ambrose. It opens up possibilities for Roman Reigns' character on the face or especially on the heel side. It gives you options for what you could do with Dean Ambrose. It also gives you the flexibility for some options for Seth Rollins, potentially opening up him to work with a Triple H at some point. You know, working with a Roman Reigns, something he really hasn't done in a full program or in a full feud. At this point in time, I know a lot of people aren't going to want to see it and maybe they'll plug their noses to it even though they know I'm kind of right about this. The best and only real functional option they have at this point in time is for Roman Reigns to win that Money in the Bank. And in my opinion, you know, unless I have Brock Lesnar come back and wreck shit up in that World Heavyweight Championship ladder match, which would be an option, then I've got to have Roman Reigns do something in that main event. And even if Brock Lesnar did come and fuck some shit up, I might still have Roman Reigns cash in anyways. All I know is this. It's come Sunday. It's Roman Reigns' time. That's right, Roman. Don't pay attention to the haters. You're going to be the Money in the Bank winner. And then you're going to go on to become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Oh, that big Samoan stud muffin with his muscles in his hair. Oh, God, I love him. Love you, Romans. Call me. Roman love you. Call me. Kevin Owens versus John Cena at Elimination Chamber, I think, will stand the test of time in 2015 as one of the very best matches in the WWE. And some might even argue it will end up being the best match of the company for the entire year. And I can most certainly give a strong argument to that. Now we've got the rematch. I've said before on multiple occasions that I'm not a huge fan of doing this rematch here so soon. And I'm not... To me, I would rather have waited until at least that July 4th NXT show in Tokyo and did the rematch there. Maybe do something where it's title for title. You know, diff different options, different things. But we've got it here. And Kevin Owens versus John Cena. I love the chemistry between these two guys, both in terms of their characters, their styles, their mouthpieces, and then ultimately in the ring. I think it works really well for all parties involved. But there's two things that I want to see with this match. Is number one... Can these guys follow up on what they did at Elimination Chamber? You know, the standards are so high based off of how great that freaking match was. It could be a real challenge to live up to that, let alone exceed it. And my fear is, is that the match could be good, but not be as good and end up leaving a lot of people disappointed, which would be a shame. It's what happens when you have such a good match the first time around. You really raise the bar of expectations going forward. Not that that's a bad thing. God knows we could use more of those expectations being raised in professional wrestling, especially in the WWE. I'm just saying it's a bit of a mountain for Kevin Owens and John Cena's characters to climb as they're putting together and piecing together this match, trying to make it work. And then number two is all about the finish. It's all about the finish. You know, I've been on record already as saying that John Cena cannot beat Kevin Owens Sunday at Money in the Bank. If John Cena wins, it benefits nobody. If John Cena loses, it benefits everybody. Now, of course, Vince and the powers that be, including John Cena, have to be smart enough to understand where the benefit lies in the decisions on Sunday. Now, if they decide to not go with Kevin Owens going over clean, I hope they at least do something where John Cena gets counted out or Kevin Owens gets disqualified. 
As we know, they're not going to do something like having John Cena get disqualified. We can't fucking do that. The worst thing of all that they could do is just instantly give Cena the win back here. This is part of the whole problem with the Cena character. This is part of the whole problem with the WWE. This protectionist mentality that doesn't really protect anybody. In fact, it ends up hindering and harming the character more than it helps and protects them. By having them sit there and so instantly and quickly, immediately getting that gratification. I realize we are very much an instant gratification society. But every once in a while, we don't want that instant gratification. And in some cases, we don't need that gratification at all. You know, if you're going to put over John Cena and... Uh, on Kevin Owens at some point in time, so be it. But it better not be here. Because if you do it here, then what's the point of another match? And, and again, then you're going to say, well, John, John Cena's got to go over Kevin Owens in the entire feud, and then you've got this guy that you're trying to establish as a top, top heel, like number one, number two heel, envisioning him being able to work with some of your other top guys going forward, you know, guys like Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton and Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose, a babyface Seth Rollins, you know, all these different possibilities that can open up if you don't have Kevin Owens end up jobbing out like a bitch here to John Cena. It's that simple. And that's ultimately, I think, what this match will come down to. It's all going to be all about the booking decision. Now, with the main event of Elimination Chamber, there was a lot of consternation about the dusty finish. Yeah. <laughs> we feel a little bit bad about that now. Now, like I said, back at Elimination Chamber, I like the dusty finish. Because Dusty Rose knows how to book, baby, and draw the people in and get them talking and wanting more. You give them just a little bit of a taste of that honey, but you don't give them a full suckle of that teeth if you will. And here we are. WWE World Heavyweight Championship ladder match between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. Now, I hope based off of what they've been teasing with Seth Rollins that this will just be a pure one-on-one -on -one affair. I'm kind of hoping that. Now, if they don't go down that path... I hope that maybe they are exploring the thought of turning Seth Rollins babyface and setting him up for something with Triple H down the road, maybe at SummerSlam. And again, that would have some appeal and interest to me. But in terms of this match, you know, I'm not, I haven't gotten to that point where I'm tired of seeing Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, so I'm, I'm fine with that. But in a lot of ways, you know, through, through all the different shit they're going to do and all the crash test dummy shit they're going to do in this match, and that's all fine and good, just like with Cena versus Owens, it's all going to be about execution and the finish. You know? And there's a part of me that almost wants him to sit there and go with Ambrose as the champ. You've teased it. You let the people get an ever so small taste of it with that death definis, baby, at Elimination Table. You know, I kind of almost want them to go with Dean Ambrose because, again, I think Seth Rollins as a heel champion, which should have worked at so many different levels, has not worked at all. And your product has stagnated, gotten kind of stale. They need something. They need some type of life. And I think that's the biggest thing I'm looking for out of this WWE World Heavyweight Championship ladder match. I want them to give me something that gives me some type of sparkle, that gives me something to really grab onto heading into SummerSlam. Now, there's a few different things that they can do in order for that to happen. Number one, you could have Seth Rollins retain with absolutely no help. And frankly, at this point in time, that'd be the biggest fucking shocker of all. Number two, you could just have Dean Ambrose win it. And you could take a walk on the wild side with the lunatic fringe and see what the fuck happens. That would get me interested. Number three, you could have Seth Rollins retain, and then Roman Reigns comes out and cashes in, and he's the champion. You've got my attention there. Number four, you could sit there and have Dean Ambrose win, only to have Roman Reigns cash in. You've really got my interest there. Number five, you could have Brock Lesnar come out and just lay waste to everybody and you don't have a fucking finish to the match. And you've really got my attention there. Or number six, you could have Lesnar come out and you could have him sit there and wipe out Rollins and or Ambrose. And then here comes Roman Reigns to cash in and you've got all types of different options for what you can do with all four of those parties involved. Uh, I'm guessing at this point in time that Lesnar isn't scheduled to show up at Money in the Bank, so maybe I need to put some of that on the back burner. But I would kind of lean towards, if I'm going to utilize him, I need him there Sunday because it could set so many things up so well for Battleground, for SummerSlam, for Night of Champions in that next couple of months going forward. It's all going to be about the finish. Now, who's going to be the champion at the end of the night? I guess that's ultimately we're going to tune in to find out on Sunday. But for my money, in my mind, in my opinion, I think it's got to be Roman Reigns. It just sets up so many things so well that it'd almost be foolish not to go with it. 
Now, it could work if they didn't go with it. Like I said, a few of those options I've given you, like Seth Rollins actually beating Ambrose legit with no help, you know, that's something. Especially if you're setting him up for Lesnar the next month. Got to give this guy at least one legit victory. Having Ambrose win the belt, shit, I'm fucking fine with that. That works too. Having Lesnar just come out and lay waste to everybody and say, there is no fucking finish, fuck you all. I'm fine with that too, especially if you're trying to play off of the fact that Lesnar got suspended. Whatever the case. But when it comes to this, those three matches that really matter, to me it's all about the finish. It's all about if Roman wins and how he wins. It's all about how Cena versus Owens ends. And it's all about who's the champion or how they become the champion at the end of the night. I really think it's going to be hard for this show to suck. Uh, WWE could shock the world and still find a way to make it suck. Uh, but you know they have the chance to do something really, really good here and really set themselves up well for SummerSlam. So I hope they're smart enough to realize that, understand that, and then uh, follow through on it. 